The World Health Organization has recognized this video game addiction as an actual disorder. Now, I gotta say, when I got back into gaming back in the late 80s, early 90s, I didn't know I was a video game addict. My first game I played was Wonder Boy 3 to Dragon's Trap. The second game I played was when my addiction began, and that was with Fantasy Star. Now, that game consumed my life for probably four months straight. It was a long RPG, it was a hard RPG, there was so many things you needed to do leveling up. And I just couldn't wait to get home from work to play that game. And I would play that game for hours and hours on end. Wouldn't watch TV anymore. My social life became non-existent. I had become reclusive, immersed myself in that game. And it would continue on from there with other games. I can remember back in the, the 90s, uh, every week I would go into a video game store hoping there would be a new release because I needed my fix. That's what it felt like to me. And even a game like, oh, I think it was uh, Dick Tracy on the Mega Drive. I saw the reviews before this game was released here in Australia. I knew it was a crap game. But when I saw that in the store, that addiction took a hold. And I just had to have that game because it was my next fix. And I think that was when I realized that there was something not right there because why was I buying crap games like that? But I couldn't help myself because I needed, I needed that fix. And then we continue on with the uh, PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Uh, I, whatever came out, I just needed to get, I needed to play that, that game. And it was around that time, I guess, towards the end of the uh, PlayStation uh, cycle, when I realized that I had a problem. See, when I was at high school, even primary school, I was very athletic. Even at high school, I was very, very athletic with weightlifting. And all those years of playing games and eating a lot of rubbish, eating a lot of junk food because I didn't want to cook. I just wanted to you know, have something quick and easy and there I'm, I'm playing games for how many hours? I don't know, days off, everything. And I, over that course of time, I would start putting weight on and I wouldn't realize that until a few years into gaming when I just, I just felt sweaty one summer. It was just like, why I never used to sweat like that. It was just like, I probably had put on about 20 kilos and I could feel around my neck, around, you know, back of my neck, my neck, just how sweaty I had become. And, and that's when I realized and looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, oh my God, what have I done? What have I become because of video games? I made the decision then. Now, this is another thing. With this, with a video game disorder these days, there is professional help. There are a lot of uh, support groups out there. There's support groups on, on YouTube, on, on various platforms. But back then, there was no support. There was, this wasn't even considered a disease back then, although we knew about video game addiction. But, you know, I had no help. I just had... Uh, motivation to try and do something about this. I wasn't happy with how I looked, uh, how much weight I had put on. My ideal weight is about 63, 64 kilos. <clears throat> uh, when I weighed myself, I was about 82 kilos. That's close to 20 kilos overweight I had become because I just wanted to play games, sit on my ass all day, play games not being active, not socializing, being a social recluse because of video gaming. And that's when I had to make the decision I needed to get fit. I needed to stop this. I needed to, to embrace life again. And I thought the best way of trying to, to lose weight to get my fitness back was swimming. So I remember the very first time I went to the pool. It was a 50 meter pool at Chermside here in Brisbane. I was pretty lucky I survived that first lap. I thought, what have I done to myself? I was totally wrecked from swimming 50 meters. I couldn't even swim the whole 50 meters. It took so much out of me. It, and somehow I found the motivation to keep going back. I could have stopped and just continued gaming. I could have just said, okay, well, screw that. But somehow I did find the motivation just to keep going. And you know, at first I didn't notice the weight loss, but I did notice I was able to swim more and more laps each time I would go to the pool each week it would, I would see an improvement in the laps I swam and slowly over the course of time 
and eating properly, I would start losing that weight. I would go down probably three pant size. And that was a really massive feeling. It was a great feeling to be able to do that. And I went from swimming, you know, trying to swim 50 meters, where I could swim 1500 meters, no problem. You know, that's one and a half K, I think. So that was really amazing. But I still managed to game as well during that time, but also I managed to live life, which is a lot of things that a lot of younger gamers these days probably don't do. Um, they're locked away in their rooms on Twitch or doing live streams, uh, playing games when they should be outside in the sun. A sunny day today, why not be outside? But for me, the motivation, I don't know, it, it just, I, I, it did surprise me that I was able to motivate myself to get fit again. But to maintain my gaming habit, but less. And like I said, it's so hard these days. Back then, games weren't released like they were today. Uh, every week there's a new release, there's, there's always something. Back then you had to wait months for a decent game to be released. But these days, it's usually every couple of weeks, oh, there's something good coming out. So I can only imagine how hard it is for gamers these days being bombarded with all these games and feeding their addiction. You know you got an addiction when you're out there trying to get the next game. You know, get your next fix. You need, I need my next fix. You know, oh, seal game. I need to open it. Quick, quick, open it. Open it. Smell it. All that rubbish. We've seen YouTubers do that shit. And, um, yeah, somehow I find the motivation to stop massively gaming like I was. And, yeah, okay, so I've got a large collection. There's collections out there larger than this. My, my shelves are not full of crap games. I don't do that sort of stuff. I, I know what I like. You may think this is an addiction. I don't know. Maybe it is, but I do play a lot of these games. Finishing them, that's another story. My daughter's going to enjoy that. And that's another thing. When my daughter's old enough, I will be introducing her to gaming. But I will be monitoring how and how much time she can play games when she's at school. Friday, Saturday nights will be games night for, for me and her. Uh, over the school holidays, maybe a little bit more, but I will be watching her gaming time very closely because I don't want her to go down that path that I did when I first started gaming, where, you know, I was immersed in gaming. I was immersed in this addiction of, I need my next fix, I need my next fix. And video game addiction is true, is real. It absolutely, I can say that 100%. I've been there. I've been through it. I've come out of the other side of it somehow, uh, just through motivation. So leave a comment down below. Have you, have you ever experienced this? Uh, I'm really interested to know this sort of stuff. And I've got to thank the Canadian Gamer. He did a great video on uh, the story of this guy, this Shamu guy, who's, who's got his channel. This is just ridiculous how many videos he's got on Shamu. And there's obviously an addiction going on there and we've seen a lot of other youtubers with gaming addictions that's for sure um so thanks mate for actually triggering my memory that has really triggered my memory of that's something that i never thought about for a hell of a long time and seeing that video it just brought it all back and i thought i need to film this talk about this uh, so thanks very much for that cam i really appreciate that video it's awesome so guys, yeah, leave a comment down below. What do you think? You've been there. I think most of us have. Get outside, enjoy the day. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.